Pull Behind the Puppets. I'm speaking to Judith Hope. Judith works in our education department and has designed puppets for our new production, The Smartest Giant in Town. Hello, Judith. I'm Angel. Hi, Angel. Hello. So, Judith, tell us, when did you first start working in puppet making? Well, I originally did a degree in fine art and textiles, so I have an art school background, um, not a theatrical background. And um, soon after graduating, I applied for a job with a children's theatre company um, and they wanted someone to be a general maker. So I started making scenery, props, costume. And then one day they said, could I make some puppets? So I thought, well, I'll just give it a go. And I kind of made it up as I went along. Um, and that was my first introduction into puppetry. And here we are now. <laughs> and what is it that you enjoy most about working with puppets? Ooh, um, I think for me, it's the fact that a well-made puppet, well puppeteered is as close as you can get to recreating life without literally mm. recreating life. Wow. I think it's that that absolute magic that draws people in that fascinates me. Yeah, puppets are a bit magic, aren't they? <laughs> and when you're making, what things do you need to consider? Like when you're designing, what are you thinking about? That's a really good question, mm. Angel. Um, I think the, the the absolute character, personality, um, backstory, who who this little character is, who this being really is, needs to come for me before anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have that feeling for who they are, um, then it's practicalities of what they need to do. How do they move? How do they hold themselves? Mm -hmm. And then you work through that, so from the kind of the inside out, and then you finish with the aesthetic, so the beautiful appearance of your puppet. Like me. Exactly like <laughs> you. Okay, Judith, what's your favourite type of puppet? <gasps> Ooh, I don't even think I could have a favourite. <laughs> there are so many wonderful types of puppet mm. that I love. And, and that in itself is one of the wonderful things that puppets are so diverse. Mm. That's what I love. I don't think I could have a favourite. Okay. I can see you've brought lots of puppets with you today. Can mm. we have a look at some of them? Of course. So we could start with, this is Horatio. Horatio, hello. <laughs> So tell us a bit about him. Oops, let's just steady him. Um, so Horatio was made by me, mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't belong to me. He was made for a company called Tatwood Puppets. Mm. Um, and they have a show called Cabaret of Curiosity. Ooh. And Horatio runs his own little kind of traveling, curious, almost circus mm -hmm. um, with different performers. Um, and he is the compare of the show. So um, he doesn't usually live with me. I'm very lucky at the moment. He came down before the first lockdown um, for a photo shoot. And then we had endless <laughs> lockdown. Oh, this photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, and he's lived with me for a year now. So oh, did you make his clothes as well? I did make his clothes wow, as well. Yeah. Gosh, lots of detail. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got some bigger puppets as well. I have, let's just pop Horatio back. Whoa. <laughs> so this is Magnolia. Mm. Um, this is just her head. Oh, so she she's on this rod here. Mm -hmm. She carries this post box. Um, so she is um, one of a pair of magpie puppets. Mm -hmm. um, she has a partner called Magnus, um, and they are large walkabout puppets. So they're actually walking nests, which we wear on backpacks high above our heads and they, their heads peek out from the nest and they carry these collecting boxes. 
And I don't know if you know the magpie rhyme, one for sorrow, two oh, for joy. Oh, yes, I know, I know. Three for a girl, four mm-hmm. for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. So they walk around in their walking nests and they collect people's secrets. So people write their secrets oh, wow. on these little pieces of paper and then they post them. Oh, that sounds exciting. What is a walkabout puppet though? Good question. So a walkabout puppet is not always large, but often a large puppet. Um, My walkabout puppets are quite large. Um, As I say, we wear backpacks and they're high above our heads so everyone can see them. Um, And instead of being in a show, so instead of being in a theatre performance, um, they kind of mingle amongst people at various events and festivals and people interact with them. Oh, I see. Thank you, Judith. Um, do you have a puppet that our viewers can make at home? I do. Oh, let's take a look at that one. So I have made a swimming turtle puppet. Oh! <laughs> oh, it moves as well. Yeah, so you've got two little rods, you can move their legs. So they can swim and you can make up lots of lovely ocean themed stories. Oh, and it moves. How do the legs move? Well, underneath, you can see we've got these split pins here. Mm -hmm. So it's just made from a paper bowl or you could use a margarine tub or something and some cereal box card, two lolly sticks and these split pins. And so then all you do is move those lolly stick rods and your turtle can swim. So clever. And there's another one. There's another little one here. So this is our 3D version Mm -hmm. of the puppet. But if you wanted to do something quicker, we've got a little flat printout 2D one. So that's also available for people to make. You can just print it, decorate and put it together. Absolutely. And we've got all the instructions on our website. Judith, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been lovely speaking to you. Oh, well, thank you very much, Thank you. (laughs) Bye, everyone. See you next time. Bye.